And just like that, we got a speedometer that works again. All we had to do is reconnect those two wires. Good to go. Time for wiring diagrams. What we're looking for is right here, vehicle speed sensor, 64-1. Just got to get there now. 49. Ooh, too far, too far. Ooh, 64-1, there it is. Right here we've got the rear axle sensor. It comes out on these two wires here, up over to the, uh, what do they call it? Programmable speedometer slash odometer module. So these two wires, looks like one is red and pink, the other one is light green and black. I believe I already know where my issue is. Uh, we'll have to go look at the truck to be sure. Um, but in short, all we gotta do is try and find some light green and black and red and pink wires that go from the rear axle up to the uh, speedo module. I think that's built into the speedometer itself. I'm not for sure. One thing I really like about this factory manual is that it gives you these little blurbs Tells you how the uh, rear speed sensor works, tells you how the uh, control module works, because the better you understand how each of the components work, the better you understand the whole system, the easier it's going to be for you to diagnose what's actually going wrong. Taking a quick look under the truck reveals, well, that looks like a red wire and a green wire to me. Looks like they've been chewed through. Here we go, creeper time. Son of a gun. Can we just, can, can we just, no, we can't. I'm gonna put it way over here and then, oh, I'm just kinda, kinda, yeah, okay. So you can see coming from the back, we got the green and the red, and going up to the front, we've got a green and a red right there. Now the real giveaway that this is it, yes, we could look and match up the wire colors in the book, but here's another little tip. See right here? Oh, you can let me grab the light. You can barely see. I'm gonna expose some more of this wiring to show you what's going on. If you look here at the red and green, and you fall them back, you can see they're twisted together. That means it's some sort of signal, sine wave. I, I don't know. There's there's up and down motion going through these, correlating to some form of speed coming from the speed sensor in the rear end, going to the the deal. The thing we looked at in the book. Once again, if we creep through the back end. Here, this right here is the plug where those two wires come from. And you can see, green and red. So, 99% positive that this right here, well, I know this is the speed sensor, but I'm pretty dang positive that these wires uh, are the same two that are ripped up front. Now, while we're back here and I'm noticing, let me show you just a quick free tip. You see how this backing plate here is all nice and dry? That's what it should look like. The one on the driver's side. See how dark it is? That's dark because it's wet. Now, I can tell it's brake fluid because it doesn't smell like gear lube. If you've ever smelled gear lube, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's only one or two things that could make that uh, dark with fluid, gear lube, or brake fluid and it's definitely not gear lube. So I've got a sneaky suspicion that that wheel cylinder's bad and that's where all my brake fluid's going, hence I've got a soft pedal. That's a later problem. This axle's coming out here long term. I've got a Dana 80 sitting in the trees just waiting, which happens to have disc brakes at the wheels. So if that's something you're interested in and you're not subscribed, please do so you don't miss out on that. Maybe this winter, I don't know, we'll have to see how far we get in the shop. Got some new wires soldered in here. Just got to connect it to the other end, which is being a pain in the rear, trying to get it to take solder. Anyhow, I just smeared a bunch of flux on there. We'll see if that helps. Also, I'm trying to use this cute little, you know, butane torch because I'm being lazy and I don't want to get, whoa, I don't want to get the soldering iron out and that got carried away without burning myself. That's, that's the real kicker. Can we solder this and not burn myself? Here we go. Ooh. Solder, solder, solder. I don't think it's gonna solder. But I have. But I also haven't burned myself yet, so that is a plus. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's ugly. Is what that is. But 
it's also probably making a very poor electrical connection, which is going to give me a horrible signal and uh, probably won't work at all. See if I can maybe get it a little better looking. That's more like it. That looks well, it's decent. All right, I got those two wires soldered up. I twisted them together uh, before I soldered them, so that would be just like the rest of the harness. See, I got this whole uh, got heat shrink on the uh, solder joints. Obviously, I got a hole here in the split limb, so I'm just going to put this bigger piece over top of that section. Then I'm going to wrap the whole thing in some scotch. Super 33 plus. Best electrical tape you can get. Trust me, there is a difference. Look how clean that instrument cluster is. Except for all the dirt that's actually inside of it. I guess I'll have to take this outer cover off and get to that dirt. But that can happen later when, you know, we clean the rest of the dash and priorities. Okay, just started moving. Look at that. It's working. It's kind of hard to drive this truck one-handed because it pulls violently. And, uh, well, it's a manual, so kind of need both hands. Cool. I'm happy about that. Not so much the speeder. I'm not too concerned about that. Um, right about 2,000 RPMs in fifth gear was 60 miles an hour. So I just use that to change my speed. I'm more concerned about the odometer because, well, the fuel gauge actually kind of started working again. I don't know that it actually works, but it, it moves. So I was going to try and track my, uh, you know, calculate my mileage with the odometer down there, but, you know, that didn't work either without the speed sensor. Well, I should probably address this. I've been getting fuel filter and water and fuel lights, which it looks like it's thinking it might go out. Let's wrap it up, see what happens. It doesn't know what it wants to do. That checks out, though, because the diesel in the tank is, well, it's 10 years old, plus I topped it off with seven gallons. Oh, perfect, it fixed itself. Don't need to address it. But like, like I was saying, the fuel's 10 years old. And uh, I topped it off with seven gallons, so who knows what the heck's in that fuel filter. I should really uh, drop these tanks, get them all cleaned out, put fresh diesel in them. That's one of the next things I'll be doing. The only gauge that doesn't work now is the oil pressure gauge, which I've got a uh, fix for that. We'll see that later. Um, anywho, guys, thank you for watching this video. If you're still here, thanks for sticking around all the way through. I really appreciate it. Drop down below in the comments. Let me know what you want me to do to this truck. If there's something that's just driving you crazy, you know, like this filthy dash, the crack dash, the missing trim, this thing that just comes off, you know, whatever. Let me know what let me know what you want me to fix next. What a beautiful sunset. See you in the next one. A little tidbit if you're still here. I came down to the local gas station to get some gas for a quad and well, look what I see on the side of the pump. Believe it or not, this guy lives about two miles away from me.